And we sometimes hear young, healthy people suddenly have a heart attack. Now, those are all unfortunate events. Now, during the summer heat wave, the most straightforward reasons would be likely related to dehydration. But what is more, now could we know about heart injuries before it's too late, especially when we are coming out of the pandemic? Hi, everyone. Welcome back. This week, now today let's have a basic lecture on the heart. Now, first, I need to emphasize that I am not a cardiologist, and my explanation here is based on recently published peer review articles, my understanding of human anatomy and physiology, and pharmacology. So, researchers from Yale University School of Medicine published a study of twenty patients with myocarditis following mRNA. COVID nineteen vaccine. Now, seventeen of them were male between sixteen to eighteen point five years old, and most of them were previously healthy, but some had non heart related conditions. Now, this study is a little different than others because it measured several functional factors related to the heart. They are the ejection fraction, fractional sh shortening. Left ventricular longitudinal strain, or LVLS, and diastolic parameters. Now, for those of you who are in a rush and just want to know the result, the study showed that left ventricular longitudinal strain could be used as a marker of subclinical myocardial injury and assess the heart condition in this young population before the clinical pre presentation of heart injury. Now, for those of you who want to learn more, let's have a more detailed explanation of what LVLS is and its implication. The left ventricular longitudinal strain LVLS is measured with echocardiograph (EKG or ECG, depending on where you come from) to assess the function of the heart's left ventricle. Now, here is the left ventricle. It's the main pumping chamber responsible for pumping oxygenated blood into the systemic circulation. And strain is a parameter that describes a tissue's length change relative to its original length. In terms of the heart, in a simple way to visualize this is that longitudinal strain specifically refers to the changes in the left ventricle along its long axis. And from this picture, it means from the base to the apex, to the tipping point of the heart. During the cardiac cycle or the pumping cycle. Now, so why LVLS matters? Now, measuring LVLS provides valuable information about the contractile function of the heart, meaning how hard、uh, it can beat. Now, it is especially useful in detecting early changes in heart muscle function. It can be an important tool in diagnosing and managing various heart conditions, such as heart failure. Uh, reduce blood flow to the heart muscle or myocardial ischemia, and other diseases affecting the heart muscle. The most importantly, changes in the longitudinal strain values can indicate abnormalities in myocardial contractility even before changes in traditional measures like ejectile fractions become apparent. Now, in this particular study, they saw that many patients had abnormal strain during acute illness following vaccination. Now, fortunately, the left ventricular function improved over time. However, the problem with this study is that it is retrospective, the small sample size, and they lost some follow-up. I think the most important finding from this study is that, in addition to drawing blood and measuring the troponin level released following a heart muscle injury, LVLS is from a non-invasive ECG or EKG, and that could be done more routinely in this particular population before and after the vaccine intervention to assess the risk of to the heart. So you may ask, do we have the answer to many young people's heart attack cases? 
Unfortunately, we will probably never have a definitive answer because every patient has a different lifestyle, medical history, and current practice tends not to measure anything if there's no symptom presented and is in the low risk population as well. Now, I remember about two years ago, um, you know, a little after I started doing YouTube, I was talking about all these.、Um, Vaccine-related things.、Uh, that was the time when the community first talked about myocarditis, about May of 2021. Now, the narrative was almost always about how the risk of myocarditis is higher from contracting the disease than from receiving certain vaccination, and I agreed to that. Answer at that point. Now, two years later, it has become more widely acceptable that for adolescents and late teens, the Moderna vaccine with a higher spike mRNA dose had a higher incident rate than infection. And let's look at this review article. This recent review article published in the Circulation Research by researchers from the University of Colorado summarized the available knowledge in this area and concluded that Moderna increased myocarditis risk 6.2 fold compared to control, which is higher than disease-related 3.5 fold increase in myocarditis. Unfortunately, acute presentations from vaccination-associated myocarditis and myocardial injury were mostly milder and with a faster recovery, according to their finding. But again, because of the way medicine is practiced these days, where there are no clinical signs of symptoms, it is not a standard to do long-term follow-up with these patients. Now, coming back to the central question, still. Why do young, healthy people have heart attacks? Now, assuming there are no unknown congenital development issues in the heart itself, it could be a combination of electrolyte imbalances we cannot rule it out and substance-induced problems. Now, I use the term substance because it is a broad term. We've just a look at studies. Of vaccine-induced heart muscle changes that could lead to injuries, now drugs and supplements that have known effects on the sympathetic nervous system can also increase the heart rate and put an extra burden on the heart. Now, some drugs of abuse, such as cocaine or amphetamine, and non-prescriptional drugs such as pseudoephedrine, can all activate the sympath. Sympathetic nervous system, or the fight or flight system, which increases the blood pressure and heart rate, or even causes abnormal beating or arrhythmia at higher doses. So, to conclude, we have another study from Switzerland showed that even though booster-induced myocardial injury was mild, it was much more common even in the female population. In one out of thirty-five persons. Now, so the bottom line is that these effects can be detrimental to individuals with existing heart conditions, especially those with unrecognized heart muscle injuries from various sources, and that could ultimately lead to a heart attack when a combination of contributing factors is presented at the same time. Now, I have to re-emphasize that. I am not a cardiologist, and I am a pharmaceutical scientist and assistant professor of pharmaceutical sciences. Now, and this is not a video to give medical advice. Instead, this video is to educate and inform viewers that heart attacks in young, healthy people can be complex and often don't have a single straightforward answer. An existing subclinical muscle injury in the heart. Could be a ticking time bomb with multiple triggering factors. Now that is all for this week. Let me know what's your thought on heart attacks in young ones. Now thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you again next week. If you like to learn more about health tips and learn to live a healthier life, take good care. Bye.